Okay, so we're at this part of the meeting that we need all your help. Uh, so uh, our, my co-organizers and I now, uh, basically we want to plan the future of this event. Um, Pablo will take it from here, and then George, and then we'll have a discussion. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so first of all, I want to say that I think we're very happy so far, of course, of the wonderful turnout that, uh, that has happened here and with, I think, everything that's been happening, uh, I think, so far. Uh, what is the purpose of this meeting? What are we really trying to do in here? Is really to begin planning, I think, all together a little bit what the future of this conference is going to be, uh, and I think to, for you to help us build, I think, in here a new intellectual community. Uh, I'm very glad to announce that at least we have like, you know, kind of, uh, a horizon of a year, uh, because very generously Claire Tomlin and Ben Reck have agreed to co-host the, the next version of this at Berkeley. So, so I guess you should thank them. <laughs> so this will happen next year uh, at Berkeley. Uh, we don't know exactly yet the time frame of the year. I think this is something that we're going to discuss. Uh, as part of this, of course, we'll need to form like a, a program committee and associated chairs. So at that point, like, you know, certainly we'll uh, need many of you to step up and like, you know, kind of and help uh, Claire and, and, and Ben with this. So there will be plenty of opportunities, I think, for many of you to do this. So please contact any of us or them uh, if you want uh, to help us. Uh, so what is uh, the specific goal of this meeting? Like, you know, kind of we really want to gather input and feedback from the community at large. Uh, and I think also to, to know a little bit better, I think, you know, kind of, uh, who, are, you know, who are, are, are all the people that are attending here. Uh, one of the things that we want to emphasize is that no decision, we're not taking any decisions at all today. What we really want to do is, you know, to see what do you think about, you know, kind of, uh, about this intellectual space. Uh, if you remember, we sent to all of you a survey, uh, like, you know, kind of after you registered for this meeting. So what's going to happen now is that uh, George is going to present the, you know, kind of the results of the survey, and then we're going to open the floor for questions and comments. Thank you, Pablo. So, uh, I'm going to present, uh, uh, you know, your, you, but before the conference, during the conference, and also we're going to think about having a survey after the conference to see uh, how it went and what we can improve. So today, I'm go now I'm going to present uh, uh, the results of the survey that was sent out a couple of weeks ago. And uh, there are about 405 of you here, or at least 405 registered. About 218 uh, uh, have responded. In fact, the latest numbers are closer to 250. If you did not uh, respond, f feel free to do so. You should have the email, and you can still do so. We're still collecting data. Uh, also, if you did not actually receive the survey, I know a couple of you just uh, registered or just uh, walked in send us an email with any answers or any suggestions uh, going uh, forward. So the first, uh, we, have, we had uh, uh, nine questions. The first question was about the intellectual demographics of the group. And uh, you, know, you had the chance of uh, sort of answering more than one of these uh, areas. So uh, you can see the, there are uh, three dominant singular values here uh, in uh, sort of control machine learning and robotics. Uh, but also, you know, very strong representation from dynamics, uh, less so from vision and in other uh, areas as well. So I'd like to hear from you if you think that there are certain things uh, missing that we should be considering or certain things that we should be enhancing uh, going uh, uh, forward. Uh, the, uh, the second uh, question was about, uh, you, know, you know, faculty versus graduate students. We're very, very happy that there is such uh, strong uh, student and postdoc representation here. In fact, that speaks very well for the future of this conference. There's nothing better about a conference and intellectual discipline growing. Uh, the best thing, as Manfred said, is to draw young talent early on. So we are, this is a very exciting uh, for this uh, space. The third uh, has to do with uh, will you submit, what will it take for you to submit your best work next year at L4DC 2020 at Berkeley, okay? So uh, many of you said, yes, we're committed, we're submitting. Uh, some of you said no. Uh, and there were a lot of maybes. So again, this is your chance maybe after in the discussion session to tell us, 
you know, what would it take for you to submit your best work? Is it that your paper is not ready, or is there something else that you were wanted to see or wanted to know? And this may be some part of the discussion we can have uh, in, uh, in a little bit. Uh, the other uh, question we ask is what is the, the, you know, there's a lot of conferences around, and uh, so there's been conferences in control and learning, robotics, uh, vision, and so on. So we wanted to know when would be the right time to have uh, this event, and uh, you could uh, check any month you want, as many months as you liked, and it seems that we got it right from uh, this year. <laughs> Uh, it seems that May and June seem to be the months that you prefer the most, uh, uh, even though there are uh, a lot of conferences uh, around this time again in various uh, disciplines. So we can uh, discuss this. The other one uh, question we had was about the format uh, of the conference, whether it should be sort of single track, multiple tracks, uh, posters, and so on. Uh, and there, there, there also seemed to be a clear winner, at least in the responses we received, and uh, mo most people preferred an oral track with uh, poster presentations similar to what we have here. The blue uh, 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 sort of responses are the ones that would be closer to sort of a multiple track, two, three, or four uh, parallel tracks, and so on. So I think there's value, especially when you bring different disciplines together, to have everyone in the room and hear sort of different uh, perspectives and different approaches, uh, and so on. Uh, then uh, the, uh, Pablo mentioned about engagement. Uh, this is uh, ways of getting you engaged for next year and, and beyond. So we asked how many of you would like to be potentially part of sort of a program committee, area chairs, whatever it's going to be called. Uh, and uh, more than 100 people volunteered to be on the program committee, go, even for next year, but going forward. So that, to me, is a very strong sense that the community is very eager to participate, help, and, and, and support this. Again, if you did want to participate and did not have a chance to submit the survey or did not receive the survey, either submit the survey or send us, any of us, an email, and we'll, we'll uh, take that, uh, we'll pass it on to uh, Ben and Claire going forward. Uh, and then um, we also asked who, how many of you would be interested in organizing the conference going forward, and it seems we're set for the next 40 years. So <laughs> uh, we have more than 80 people interested in hosting it at various places. So, um, you know, so we're, we, I think we're all set. So that, that's a little bit of summary uh, of uh, what we have now. I think now, you know, we can have a discussion. This can provide context for the discussion going forward. But also we will have a uh, survey uh, after the conference and you, we can see the yeah. pre and post kind of uh, yeah, answers. So with that, I'll pass it on back to uh, yeah. Pablo. Yeah, so as I said, you know, we're, op we're opening the floor for, for questions. One thing, we'll go, in the, around, we'll go around to the mics. One thing that I would, uh, that we encourage you if you want, like, you know, identify yourself before asking a yeah. question, like, you know, just so I think people get to know you. Just uh, tell us your name, serial number, and rank. So. Credit card number, <laughs> very important. <laughs> so, oh, good. Hi, uh, my name is Craig Burr. I'm uh, with MathWorks, and I was wondering about uh, you didn't have any industry sponsors. Whether you're planning to incorporate industry sponsors in, in future conferences? That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So this year we were lucky to have uh, generous support from multiple government agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, for future years, we'd like to you know move to a registration-based system, and of course we'd welcome yeah. uh, industrial so uh, sponsors absolutely. It will be critical, actually. Yes. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. But also, we're open to other forms in addition to sponsorship that we, you think. I think I'd, you know, my question to you would be, what are the mechanisms, what is the role of industry uh, in this guy, in addition to sponsorship? And I think that would be something we, we would like to hear your thoughts from you know, my, all the uh, industry representatives in the room. Okay, we have an hour for questions, <laughs> so <better. laughs> otherwise we're going to sit looking at each other for an hour, yeah, so yeah, you're so stuck uh, in this yeah. room with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so, you know, regarding the industry engagements, you know, one idea could be to have a hackathon or some style of, like, more, you know, hands-on tutorials, right? So, for instance, uh, I'm at NVIDIA and also Caltech, but the NVIDIA, you know, hat of me will, can think of uh, doing, like, uh, Rapids is this open source framework for end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines and how to s productionize at scale. Uh, we can do the drive simulators and um, uh, the drive system for autonomous driving and um, uh, you know multimodal sensor processing. Uh, we can think about uh, the robotics platform Isaac, uh, both in simulation and uh, uh, you know moving that onto the embedded systems. Uh, how to do uh, vision-based control. So there are many nice tutorials and uh, hands-on workshops. Uh, that could be one aspect of it. The other can be hackathons where mm -hmm. we provide resources, we provide both potentially hardware and software resources mm -hmm. and have a limited span of time for students to, you know, do more hands-on work. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kathy and I just spoke. <laughs> uh, so I was wondering, how do you think about how the control and machine learning community have different values in terms of publications? So journals and conferences have, are sort of um, like, at least the norms are somewhat different between the communities. And so how, how I'm curious how you have considered, or do you, um, do you have any thoughts on that difference for the community and how that affects this event moving forward. George is the department, a department chair, so I'll let him answer. <laughs> oh, no, Pablo, go for let, it. let me just say something. I mean, we may have our own thoughts, but we're actually, I mean, we may have our own thoughts, but we're actually interested in your yeah, thoughts. Exactly. Uh, let me know, what, what do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, that, yeah, that's really what I think yeah. this meeting is about, yeah, right? Yeah, right. That's a, not to put you on the spot, Kathy, other people can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe, be, uh, Ben, uh, you want to say a little bit about at least some thoughts about... <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I, I, can't, I do agree with Pablo. I, mean, I, I, yeah. I also have thoughts about that. Yeah. I feel like we've had, there's an evolution in all of these yeah. spaces, right? I right. feel like there used to be a lot more pressure, even on controls folks, to turn CDC papers into journal papers, and there's not quite, I don't necessarily see that pressure necessarily yeah. uh, anymore. I feel like this thing is a very complicated, evolving system. Um, and now if you have people who send papers to both controls mm -hmm. venues and to machine learning venues, are these things judged differently? Or are they just the same? I, I, I'm not, I don't know. I feel like we're- I think departments weird. are loosening up, at least that's my sense, but maybe there wrong. See, there we go, there we go, Yeah, yeah. I think they may be, I think as long as, long as they are- chair speaks, man. <laughs> As, as long as they are, you know, uh, high quality venues, whether it's a conference or a journal, I think that would, uh, you know, that would be fine. I think, yeah. So this brings us to the yeah. main question, yeah. which is what, what does it take yeah. for you and others to send their best work? That's what we're trying right. to so. figure out. Yes, Max. So, sorry, let me, let me just make one more point on this. Sure. So I think one of the things that I think also I think it's very important for us to realize is that that's up to us. Mm -hmm. know, we're defining, or I think it's a great opportunity I think for us to define mm -hmm. what are the standards for this community. Whether we want to go in the journal direction or we want to go in the direction mm -hmm. of this. And you know, once there's a clearly defined expectation mm -hmm. of, you know, of where the best work in this area is going to appear, you know, kind of departments adapt to this. Or you know, people mm -hmm. are experts in, you know, kind of in, in your area, you know, kind of they will know, oh yeah, that's a top venue. You know, you know, or that's not a top venue, whatever you know, kind of this ends up happening. So Thanks. I think I would not take the answer as a given, but yeah. more you know, what, do, what is yeah. it that we want? Well, so, so th this, this, um, I'm uh, Max Raginski, I'm a faculty member at uh, URUC. I sort of have worked at the intersection of ML and control for quite some time, before it became cool, one could say. Um, so I'm glad to see this. Uh, in terms of a publication model, I mean, an older model for conferences was this venue where everybody was just happy to come and tell about their most recent work. Uh, my preferred solution would be a low pressure kind of thing, where it's not just a, yet another conference to submit to and worry about deadlines as opposed to here's a conference. It's, it's, yeah, it doesn't have, you know, 
archival proceedings or something like that, more of a venue to come and exchange results and get what the, com you know, what the different communities uh, see. And you can submit this work to CDC or NeurIPS or ACML or COLT. Um, but another thing I was going to say is that, once again, kind of, you know, I'm an old guy, <laughs> older than most of the audience here, and I read a lot of literature. Most of it is actually in Russian from 1960s. And so a lot of these ideas at the intersection of learning and control and dynamical systems have been around, maybe not in the same form, but they have been around for some time. It would be good to have, I think it's finally time to start this conversation about the history and have tutorials or lectures or something like that about some of these historical things uh, for people to see these connections and seeing these connections and, uh, uh, and ideas kind of cross-fertilizing from one, one field to another, in my experience, leads to all sorts of new insights that will uh, mm -hmm. you know, take all these fields in various directions. I think that would be another valuable aspect of So are you trying to say people wrote papers before 2011? <laughs> 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 well, that's actually funny. I, at some point, I've looked at uh, proceedings of NeurIPS from 1997. And it, or something like that. And if you look at the list of topics, it is eerily similar to what people do now. Mm -hmm. There are all these things like, how do you choose the best activation function for neural nets? How many critical points the neural nets have? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, models for language, all sorts of things. It's, these things come and go in cycles, but uh, yeah, people were writing, <laughs> you know, writing papers before 2011. <laughs> And some of them, like I said, were published. And uh, you know, thanks to the Cold War, a lot of Russian work was translated into English. I think it was like several months after the original Russian translation and English translation would appear in the West. So I guess your suggestion is to have a conference that where there's no proceeding. So Online proceedings I, or something like that, but it's not, it's not considered uh, uh, archival. archival. Sounds that this discussion is leading to a very nice post-workshop uh, uh, question for the survey as to two, three models. One is you know, just present your best work with no proceedings, conference, or prestigious uh, you know, selective. And I think, let's, you know, I think that sounds to be a precise question to ask post-workshop. So. I think there was a uh, there, question There were some there. questions yeah. up there yeah, before. I, I'm uh, Noah Olsman. I'm a postdoc at Harvard Medical School. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of wanted to, I guess, put out there and ask questions about bringing the sciences into a conference like this because uh, I even sort of tried to sell people in my department on this and the perception was it's gonna be a lot of robotic stuff and it's kind of hard, it's like, is it worth the time because it's not really in the domain and I think there's a lot of demand for the tools uh, mm -hmm. in this room in the sciences. There's an enormous amount of data but there's the connections between those are few and far between of getting the right domain and the right expertise so I think that there's a huge upside in casting a broader net and sort of getting people outside of the traditional learning controls community into a room like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's just a thing that knowing people in, this, in the field that I work in, like there's a, they would love to have a venue where they could sort of come and talk about the problems they have and sort of see if there are existing solutions, if there's good research opportunities uh, to work with people in this community. Did you fill out the survey? Uh, I did. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's a great suggestion. I think, you know, that, that's fantastic actually, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I agree with uh, all these suggestions. I think in machine learning, uh, we are at a tricky time. Uh, right. If you submit it to NeurIPS, I guess you saw that uh, we finally crashed the submission server, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it was, uh, you know, whatever, 8,000 or nearly 10,000 submissions. And so this expansion of the field without having the right review system, uh, you know, we are trying to bring in more reproducibility and more mm -hmm. uh, checks and balances, but it's, we are not able to mm -hmm. uh, have, you know, like incorporate uh, all the interest, right? And, uh, and I think the, uh, in a survey, about 80% of the reviewers are students. So uh, that is, sorry, Ben, did you have a no, 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 no. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I thought you were pointing it. So, uh, uh, so that's also an issue of uh, review quality there, and many people want other alternatives. So for the first time, I sent a paper to ICRA, which is the robotics and automation, and I was really surprised, like, how, you know, like, how NeurIPS and other venues used to be a few years ago. It's the smaller community, the work uh, uh, gets to the right reviewers, so... Uh, so I think there is value in having smaller communities exactly, with the focus. Uh, 
yeah. but also you know students you know i can say like oh i don't worry about uh, you know this being archival but for students it would matter right it so uh, putting a strong uh, uh, value to that publication saying this is uh, an important venue mm -hmm. to get in it's hard to get in uh, and there are strat standards we'll enforce, whether it's reproducibility, yeah. whether it is experts I, reviewing yeah. this. I was in this room uh, in 2005 for the same meeting for the first RSS, and exactly the same thing came up. Yeah. Archival publications have a strong value for RSS when it comes up for tenure and so on. So. Uh, it was exactly the same point yeah. that you're bringing up. And you know, on the other hand, I do like the short term, uh, like kind of just a short cycle for the mm -hmm. conferences, right? Like NeurIPS and ICML as opposed to journals in the double E fields where yeah. I know I was with, during my PhD. Uh, so something in between, like I think VLDB does it well, like there are mm -hmm. journal like publications every month, and but all of them get uh, compiled together to a conference presentation at the end of mm -hmm. the year. Uh, so there are some in between as well that try to uh, do you know, a hybrid model. Uh, but for sure, I think uh, in machine learning pe field, people are looking for uh, specializations and alternatives to these mm -hmm. big venues where there is a lot more variance and mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a lot of frustration. Um, Vikash from uh, Google Brain uh, up here. Great. Um, so I think like if this is a new conference and we are trying to figure out what the structure is going to be. So this gives us an opportunity to address some of the things that we have been complaining for a while. Review qualities and how the whole scene of uh, submissions and conferences are changing over time. So this is a very good way to be proactive and take like strict steps. It might not be the common voice from all of the, from everyone from the room, but as long as some critical people can decide that this is how the future should look like, this gives us an opportunity in that direction. Specifically things like, we already know most of the papers that come out because of archive and everything. How much value does it add today? Uh, should we, make it uh, a point that the code should be submitted with the paper. We can make those things mandatory to improve the quality, which like a lot of people will have conflicted opinions about. But as long as we think that yes, these are the strict measures to ensure the quality of the future. Um, in addition, trying to meet like how the future looks like, because earlier it used to be the case that yes, you come to a conference and you discover these new ideas because we have never seen those papers. But these days, we have already seen those papers. We mostly know all these people. The world is getting more connected. Um, so th I, I think the meaning of conferences needs to change with time. And this gives us an opportunity to rethink that value. What does, what does it bring? Um, how can we make it more reproducible? How can the review system change? Um, should we just open this one web portal per paper and then like let people just upload codes for different implementations, people vote on different implementation, then being correct, wrong, et cetera, like have a feedback system on the paper that goes on and on, et cetera, et cetera. So the potentials are huge. I'm just asking a proactive measure here can go a long way. Over there. Uh, Doris, I can go first. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think Anima asked most of my questions, but I have like one quick question actually. So what is the size of this conference that you're expecting? Because like learning, that includes all of NeurIPS, ICML, Eclair, Control, CDC, and ACC are not that small either. So uh, like what is the size? Because a lot of these issues that, that we have like with let's say NeurIPS reviews and all that is because of like how large it is and how, how it grows. So do we want this to be small, single track, or do we want this to be? large, multi-track, like same issues as some of the So uh, I guess we're at the interface of the two. That was sort of the whole point of, of, and we don't really know what the size should be. That's one of the questions. The survey seemed to indicate that people prefer single track with posters, so, so single track speakers and, and poster sessions. Um, is this the size? Is this the community? We don't know, but I guess we'll, we're trying to find out, I, I think. But um, I guess that's one reason for this meeting to, to get some answer to these questions. But my guess is, I, I guess, we, I was very surprised uh, by the enthusiasm and how many people showed up. So this is an encouraging sign that 
maybe around this number is the right number. Uh, again, I don't know but if you want to add anything. Yeah, I think I, I would define it more in terms of like, you know, how many people think that this is perhaps a primary venue for what they want to do. Like, you know, kind of, I think uh, like, you know, some of us like, you know, kind of really do work in this space, some of us like, you know, do work perhaps that tangentially like, you know, relates to this. So I think what like, you know, kind of will probably be the limiting factor of this is that, like, you know, kind of, again, I think the question that you had before, and when you think about your best work, are you, is this a, the, the place that you want to target or like, you, know, kind of, you want to target? Something else. point that mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are frustrated with the same issues that we are discussing here with the review process of NeurIPS or CDC or all of these conferences. So I think there are a lot of people who are looking for something like this. Mm -hmm. So it's and, and it's exciting mm -hmm. but I think it can create the same issues that, mm -hmm. that you might have. So the hope is we don't reproduce the same problems over, over and over. <laughs> yes. There was a question back there. Hi, I'm Sylvia. Um, I was the human in Anka's slides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to echo a lot of the things here that I, I really do think that there's a strong need for an RSS-like quality conference in this particular intersection, and it would be really wonderful to have that forum as a place to submit good quality papers and for them to be a good quality review, whether that's double blind, include the code, something like Wafer where you are required to have a dirty laundry slide at the end where you have to be honest with your, your work. Uh, so that would be wonderful, and I'd really, I would absolutely submit to something like that. Um, I also want to... Uh, emphasize the history of controls, robotics, uh, AI learning uh, idea. I think that as a PhD student, that would be so valuable to me to have kind of a survey of the historical concepts. And similarly, if this is going to continue to be free to students at least, having those types of videos and these technical talks available online to students who are interested, I think will both gather a lot of interest in this conference and will also be really helpful to students and to professors teaching these subjects uh, for kind of guest lecturers. Yeah. Yes, the, the talks of this conference are recorded and they will be online. Uh, we cannot live stream this year, but, uh, but perhaps in the future we, we can think about that. Anka, oh, there was Devavrat and then Anka. Uh, oh, there was, so, sorry, it's coming back. <laughs> Devavrat Sham, uh, uh, faculty member here at LIDS. Um, first of all, the congratulations to organizers for pulling this uh, together. This is excellent. Uh, few, few items, uh, logistically, I think uh, it might uh, make sense or it might not make sense to associate this kind of meeting with any of the professional society. Not associating might be beneficial to keep the conference registration fee small, and uh, maybe sort of organizing in university environment will help too, uh, to avoid uh, sort of all the auxiliary issues that can arise with uh, a heavy professional organization. Uh, this intellectually, this community is likely to attract both theoretical type of work and experimental type of work. So trying to figure out how to manage those two uh, aspects carefully both in terms of representation, reviewing process, et cetera, would be an interesting uh, challenge, but worth uh, taking on rather than avoiding it. Uh, some of the uh, uh, neighboring fields, such as information, for example, information never showed up in one of those things, but implicitly it's present here among individuals as well as work. So something to think about. Uh, on one hand, uh, as some of uh, the folks have already said, keeping uh, the conferences focus narrower can help a lot. On the other hand, keeping it too narrow could be uh, an issue. Finally, this uh, participation is amazing. Uh, now, it will be terrible if a conference becomes super selective and only people who present the paper and have the paper accepted show up and rest, though they feel part of the community don't show up. So in a sense, having this as a way to build community, not to broad a community like NeurIPS or uh, I may not say that, and maybe I will, f uh, I will, be, I will be banned from the dinner tonight, <laughs> that, like CDC, <laughs> but it's too big, so somehow sort of keeping it uh, smaller, uh, but at the same time sort of inclusive enough and ask, uh, getting enough people so that the community is built would be great. Um, all right. I, I could not, personally could not agree more with each and every statement you made. So, no. uh, yes, sorry. Uh, this is a question, I, I didn't uh, follow the website carefully and I missed the <laughs> intro, but it might be helpful uh, to, uh, 
to just say what the current uh, plan is for the future? Like, what's on the table? Are you considering making it a conference with proceedings or, or not? Or so we're trying to find out. So you're deciding this, but right now. but is, out. is there a plan? There will definitely be one next year. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? That's as far as we've gotten. An event? Very, very short horizon. But, but is it like on the table to possibly no, make mic. it a conference or is it? Okay. But it's also on the table Use to the just mic. make it a, it's also on the table to just uh, have it a, like a speaking event like the, okay. So it's anything, it, you know, all, all that's decided now is you'll meet again. Okay. <laughs> but all of these are on, on the yes. table. <laughs> but all, all of these are on the table right now. will be an event next year in Berkeley, right? Yes. <laughs> we, Claire and I are on it. Claire and I are on it. That's all we know. But what exactly? Yeah, we haven't quite figured it out. We'll have the same name. Question we have a question. Then there was a question in the back there. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Pratik. Uh, I work at Amazon right now. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, we have been talking about how big the conference should be, what the review format should be, et cetera, et cetera. But intellectually, where do you see this play conference lying between, let's say, Colt, uh, which is about learning theory on one side, and if I want to take the other side of the spectrum, something like IROS, ICRA, uh, CDC perhaps falls somewhere in between. But where does this conference lie in your vision or opinion? Sorry? No. You know, I will. I will uh, take a first stab. Uh, at least my. But uh, you know, it, uh, you know, you're asking me. But the, 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 as Pablo said, the question to some extent. Uh, you know, we're trying to figure out what you want this to be, and to some extent, by your participation in, in this event, you're answering that question. So, given that, yes. my, so to, my, be, to my, be clear, I signed up for yes. I will submit a paper next year. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but but the. the um, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, if you s do machine learning work, say, in the control context, and you submit it to CDC, that's great. But, uh, you know, at least in my personal experience in the, in the HCC and other related communities, mixing up with other communities, ha ha being, in, you know, together with machine learning, robotics, other communities, dynamics, and so on, together, I think provides a valuable inside intellectual discourse that is very hard to, to sort of steer CDC to. Uh, you could argue something dual, even though I cannot speak to that with the same uh, level about, you know, what... Uh, so I think a lot of us here f feel that there is a little bit of a uh, sort of space between CDC and NIPS that this can sort of become the prime home to, even if one looks at it as a, you know, a sort of a... Uh, sort of a more focused version of CDC or a more focused version of uh, NIPS. At least that's my perspective uh, on this. And I think, uh, you know, again, this is a personal opinion. It's not necessarily community. When you bring different communities together, I do think that a single track helps in sort of mixing the ideas and the perspectives and so on. And that helps educating the future uh, students for, for being truly bilingual across the disciplines. So that's my personal view. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ankara Gan from UC Berkeley. Um, so I was thinking about Coral. I was a program chair for Coral last year, so I was kind of thinking about lessons learned from that. And I have a negative one and a positive one, and I'm Eastern European, so I'll start with the negative one. Um, <laughs> the, 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 it goes back to this, to this review process, right, and how in order to convince people to submit their their top work, they have to think that it's uh, you know it's like the uh, RSS does that now, right? I don't know where RSS was in 2005 and how it started and whether people did that. Maybe it takes a while to build up a reputation. But for for Coral, what was particularly interesting compared to RSS was figuring out what the reviewer pool should be. So I had very lofty goals with Coral last year going in, where I said, "Oh, we're going to have such thorough reviews," and I took a number of steps. To many steps, okay, about nine I made a list to make sure that we have very thorough reviews. Um, and it included things like very detailed instructions for what to do and not to do in a review. And it included like me actually going through reviews and yelling at reviewers for being <laughs> too superficial. Um, so, so, and still, still, I'm not sure how far we actually went towards having, I have my own qualms with what happened. Um, so I think, 
one of the challenges compared to, say, RSS was that RSS is very broad. So you have a selected conference that draws reviewers from all of robotics. You're going to get, you know, five submissions in human-robot interactions and ten in manipulation and whatever. So you need that many reviewers. Now, in Coral, we needed reviewers that were at the intersection of robotics and learning. So we need people who knew about learning and knew about robotics. At least that was my thinking going in. And all of a sudden, your pool is actually much smaller. And once you've decided on area chairs, you've eliminated a bunch of the experts already. And so now you're down to what? Um, so then that's one thing to keep in mind in terms of being able to actually build up very um, well-reviewed, a, a good reviewing process. That was the negative. The positive side is one thing that I was super happy to have a bunch of control over was in the actual program, kind of going back to this historical notes, um, uh, you have a, an opportunity to actually set up tutorials that mm -hmm. are not, you know, specific like workshop style, but that are for like a one to two hour tutorial for the whole audience, like over lunch or something like that. And I was super happy with how that turn out at Qual. One of my goals there was to make people, for instance, be more a bit more educated about the model base size. So I got Ben and Emma to talk and I thought that was really well received and it kind of did the job. So that's one one lesson. Can you say one thing about that? The, the other thing that I uh, the other thing I really liked about that was I probably would not have gone to Coral otherwise and it was an awesome experience. So uh, uh, inviting people from outside to give mm -hmm. tutorials also kind of broadens your community. Um, like so we had a question right there and then one in the back. Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Rose. I'm an assistant professor in the Northeastern. So I just want to comment on like some reason I think I might submit to this conference. Um, I think definitely one is having good reviewers. Um, you know, but the, the issue is that, you know, most of us are so, so tied up with all kind of things and uh, uh, why would you, you know, I, I, I kind of imagine it's hard for people to spend extra time to do like high quality reviews. So I, my suggestion for that is incorporating some sort of autonomy in a reviewing system, like run a topic model or something <laughs> um, to, to basically filter out, you know, good reviews, bad reviews, right? Because we're talking about autonom automation, automation, and we should have some automation in this conference as, you know, to make it different from others. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the other, uh, the other thing um, I think is uh, interesting is um, uh, so this is more like interdisciplinary field um, based on my own experience in like organizing uh, stuff such as like interdisciplinary conference in physics and machine learning or like climate science and machine learning. I think uh, one key. Um, I think one key point of success is, you know, to have people who have complementary strengths, right? So, like, um, like for my set, you know, I would like to know what our control center is good at, what kind of tools that they have that I can understand. Um, I, I believe, you know, the other direction also holds. Like, control scientists might want to know what are the tool sets <laughs> out there in ML that could be useful for them. So, I think from like organizational perspective. Um, maybe have some sort of official um, like website for that. You know, can, people can look it up and just know the language, just understand the translation. So can know where to look at, what are the references, how to understand that. Uh, that thing, and you know, either either tutorial format or some sort of website format, or you say a Wikipedia or whatever, uh, would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Canon Lewis. I'm a PhD student at Rice uh, with Lydia Karaki. Um, I, I love a lot of the ideas that have been pitched here today, um, but, but what I've really found myself wanting to have uh, over the course of today uh, in specific is, is kind of a space to have more specific discussions. So just in the talks today, we've seen you know, people doing learning for HRI, people doing learning for uh, forward invariant sets, system identification, all this kind of different disparate topics within the sort of learning for direct control uh, idea. And something that I would appreciate, even if it's not um, uh, necessarily like a traditional workshop format, but especially if this is going to be sort of uh, a conference that doesn't have formal proceedings, it would be nice to have a space for students, especially to be able to discuss specific ideas or approaches to uh, learn control. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this? I mean, what kind of 
things you imagine, for instance? Well, so, so uh, kind of in the RSS model, right? RSS's classical problem is that robotics is a really wide field and you need some sort of like focusing idea. Uh, so in recent incarnations of RSS, there's this two days of conferences um, where you can go to conferences that sort of are more directly uh, aligned with whatever your research is and then those workshops, in my experience, tend to drive really good discussions yeah. about sort of where a particular subfield of robotics is headed uh, or what, what the sort of uh, important issues to discuss are, important references, stuff like that. Um, some, some sort of space of that kind. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Sarvamin uh, from MIT. Uh, so I have a couple of suggestions or, or thoughts. Uh, so one of the things is that this particular conference op offers, uh, or, or idea offers a unique kind of uh, opportunity to merge two different fields. So we are long aware that you know, there are simultaneous developments both in control, learning, and statistics. And there has been, of course, ideas which have been coming up and going down you know, and revisited or reinvented. So in terms of systematiz systematization of the knowledge, I think there is, a, there is an important opportunity of, to identify what is actually something which is common across the fields and what could be regarded as a new idea, an upcoming idea. So I think for, for at least for me, it is, it is very difficult and it's very important to first understand that before even assessing what is new. Now in terms of uh, the second, in terms of the invited uh, presentations or, or, or selected submissions, I think it's important to also have some kind of quality control and since you have the leadership for at least a couple of years in terms of uh, how it should be positioned, I think that you know, having s some targeted talks, even like sampled across a spectrum, a small or a large spectrum, on what could be admitted as a, a, a representative contribution in this space, rather than actually making it free uh, in terms of you know, what, what it could and let it emerge, I think that's, that's important for quality control, some kind of targeted, invited things. The third thing is actually this aspect of the connection with humans and learning. And, and many of the examples we saw where humans played a key role in enabling learning or human-like learning. But I think there are broader perspectives coming from economics, social networks, et cetera. So one of the questions would be whether the aspect of learning is limited to human-robot interactions or beyond. And this relates to a final question about many of the co qu questions which were, many of the comments which were raised were related to robotics conferences. So one of the things to be decided would, would be whether in terms of the application domains or, or examples which one would admit, would it be just limited to robotics or robotics-like applications or, or, or it could be broadened towards uh, a, a larger you know, domain of applications where learning and control and the intersection is, is useful to, to see. Yeah, just quickly comment about that and then we have one in the back. That I think we did definitely envision something here that was broader than robotics. While there's a lot that ends up happening in the robotic space, and that's definitely something that's been thriving, we've definitely seen a lot of applications that go far beyond mm -hmm. robotics. Um, in particular, like Kathy's talk on traffic, I don't know if I would necessarily call that robotics, and there's definitely people there. Anka's talk also had a lot of humans already, and was kind of making, um, um, using, using ideas, and definitely incorporating ideas from behavioral economics. Um, but one can envision energy versions, health okay. versions, yeah. and so on, and I think those would be absolutely, we should be very inclusive of those, absolutely, yeah. And I think we'd definitely like to be inclusive of no. any place that there's a dynamical system with learning inside of it, yeah. I think we had the next one in the back, go ahead. Hi, my name is Vichy Pong, and I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley. This has more to do with kind of the mechanics of the right, workshop conference um, that we're trying to figure out, and kind of ties back to what, say, Vikash was saying about should we require people to submit code for reproducibility, or what Sylvia was saying about, oh, should we have a required kind of dirty laundry list? Um, and I think something that maybe we're in a good position to potentially address is what we do about negative results, and how can we actually encourage people, say, to publish these? Um, so I'm not exactly sure how we could do that, but it could be in the form of having people pre-register, for example, the experiments, and where their, for example, their papers are reviewed and maybe even accepted without even seeing the experimental results. Um, or maybe it's just something simply explicit that says, no, this paper is at this conference, does actually encourage um, negative results. But that's one thing that we could potentially uh, consider. So um, yeah, I'm Sebastian from Max Planck in Germany. Um, so coming back to the question, like what does it take us to submit the, the best work? Um, I think it was mentioned several times, qu quality. I think it's really, it needs to be a top quality event. And what was already, there were a couple of things already said, like good review, then maybe um, 
also submitting code, etc. One thing that was alluded to but maybe not explicitly mentioned is I think we need to talk maybe about envisioned acceptance rate, like what is roughly uh, where we want to be because I think um, the, the two communities or machine learning and control do differ significantly in there. Like CDC, we are talking about like 50% or so acceptance rates while the top machine learning conferences are significantly lower. And I think to make this a top venue, we need to, or I would personally prefer to go uh, for low acceptance rate, like at the order of 20, 25%, something like RSS style, I guess. And I think this is key to make uh, people interested in submitting the best work here and not elsewhere. Um, thanks, Sam. Emu Todor of uh, somewhere in Seattle. Uh, so I actually have a radical proposal regarding uh, reviewing. I think we should go the other way, make the submissions non-anonymous and make the reviews non-anonymous. And I've been doing that since I was a postdoc. Actually, I've been signing my reviews whenever it was allowed. And that has forced me to write much more thorough, much more polite reviews. A number of authors have written back to me to say thank you, that was the best review I ever got, even if their paper got rejected. May have made some enemies along the way, but I'm still here. <laughs> uh, and I think that would really, so for example, Anka yelling at the reviewers, she's yelling at them at private, they don't care. If you associate your name with some stupid review, everyone knows you wrote stupid reviews, so you're not going to do it. That's the way to, for, to increase the quality, just make it non-anonymous. Non okay, yeah, I mean, Ben is right. Some people I mean, will not realize the stupid review, but, uh, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think it would increase the quality, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, yes, all the papers are going to get better reviews, but the, the best papers are still going to get the best reviews, and it's not going to bias anything. It's just it's going to improve quality. So if you want to do something bold and different, here's an idea for you. Actually, just to follow up on that, Emma, I mean, like, the, so um, it's not exactly this yet, but ICLR went down this path of op using open review. Um, and what's interesting to me is the best reviews definitely are the ones that are signed. They're not the ones that were the anonymous reviews. It's very interesting. Somebody reads the paper and is like, you know, and, and will sign it saying this is, maybe this is the problem or maybe this is why it's interesting. And those actually are always really, really good. So if we actually just, it, it's a, that's a pretty radical idea that everything has to be signed. Not, not radical, who knows what good or bad, I don't know yet. That's great. Christian Vassile, Lehigh University. So going also back to the uh, problem of uh, reviewing. So because this is a new conference, uh, taking the, the, what we already know from other conferences, we know that we write the paper as a control, uh, control paper for CDC, for ICRA and IROS and RSS, we write a robotics paper. So the opportunity here is to learn how to write a conference paper for this particular one. And going back to reviewing, we also have the opportunity to train uh, our reviewers for this community. And training here is probably the most important one because a lot of times students don't know how to write reviews because they learn that through the, uh, through the process of doing it itself. I actually wrote a very bad review the first time I did because I didn't have any, uh, any guidance on it. I tried to find something on the internet a very long time ago. There weren't so many resources. <laughs> but now I think I'm a bit better about it because I got more uh, tips from postdocs, from uh, my uh, professors, and so on. At some point, ICRA was doing this program where they, uh, or at least there was the idea, I don't know too much about how, how it went, but uh, they were going to let uh, reviewers do sub-reviewers for students and be able to give them feedback on their reviews. So I think that is, uh, would be very interesting to try and do and have them, uh, the reviewers, not as the bad guys here, but maybe potentially as the resource to educate and not to just trim down. Hi, um, I'm Somil and I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley. So I think uh, I first want to echo Vichy's point to encourage negative results. And one of the things that I really liked at ICRA this year last week uh, was that they had a special session to just, just for the negative results. So people were asked to actually submit videos on the negative results in robotics, and then they were picking up how that can guide the robotics research in future. So something like that could be really nice to have in the conference. Um, the second is um, what it takes to submit the paper to L4DC. Um, and I think, again, I would echo that the review quality really matters. 
And both as a reviewer as well as the receiver of that uh, review from Coral, I had like really nice experience uh, at Coral. So I will just pick that as an example. So after the normal review process, there was like a meta review process where all the reviewers were asked to discuss their reviews among, uh, among each other and to come up with a final conclusion on that paper. So something like that forced the reviewers to actually look at each other's point and see what they actually like and what they actually don't like, which made the reviews really high quality. So something like that can also be done maybe for, uh, for the review process. And it always looks like quite a reminder, you know, to get people <laughs> <laughs> at, at ICRA, they also had a debate on deep learning and robotics that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have one. Uh, so about uh, negative results, uh, so that goes in also goes into a deeper question of like how to organize uh, scientific knowledge, right? Like, so we do experiments and like all dynamic and con control can ha can be extracted in some, some like equation format, and all we are exploring are like changes in that equation at some axis. So if there is maybe like, instead of like eight page papers that are hard to search and hard to index, like if we have a common database, uh, like a hierarchical explorable database like Wikipedia, but more specific to dynamics and control, then uh, as, uh, uh, as you suggested, people can like claim that I'm doing this like in this hierarchy of all possible experiments, I'm doing this experiment, and if you want to collaborate, then it's good, but maybe like see three months later whether there are experiment results and linked papers. So if that kind of organization can be done, I'm not sure if that's the responsibility of this conference, but as a, uh, as a team of researchers who are building upon knowledge that is easily searchable, maybe we should look towards that. Maybe one more question, if there is. Uh, I think we have one over there, and we'll wrap up. Yeah, so uh, just one note on the reviewers. Um, it might be helpful if the submitter, is, or whatever the name for that is, uh, might be anonymous. I think if I were reviewing some paper um, personally, that that might have some. I might have some implicit bias, and I see it's oh, it's a really famous author. I might treat it like differently than, you know, if it were if it weren't. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is um, just about uh, uh, m my own knowledge of like of some of the uh, presentations here. So I think uh, maybe for some, I'm I'm a controls engineer from Aptiv. Um, so I, I'm very familiar with some, some of the more controls leaning uh, presentations. Um, some of the machine learning ones I'm not so familiar. So I think it'd be helpful if we have, uh, to echo other people's points, um, some kind of tutorial uh, learning session, but also if we could have that in a, maybe a survey afterwards mm -hmm. um, to see kind of what, what's the level of uh, understanding there. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. I think one of the things that Lena will actually help to gel, I think many of the ideas in here is exactly Lena going to have to have tutorials, but also Lena like a written record of Lena going to have this in some kind of Lena survey. Yeah, I think that's a very good suggestion. Okay, great. So in the interest of time, Lena going to, I think we really thank you, Lena, for all of this. Lena going to, hopefully, the discussion will continue, Lena, over the coffee break. 4.30 will resume in here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.